member for Fleetwood Port South. Madam Speaker, it is with sadness but with resolve that I rise today to take part in this historic debate. The country and indeed the world is watching what is happening here. I hope that we can prove to be worthy of this moment in Canada's history. I would like to begin by thanking the members of the Parliamentary Protective Services who have been working hard to keep us all safe and to ensure that the people's servants can continue the people's work uninterrupted. And it is, and it is so important that our work continues that we show the people outside and indeed the world that our democracy is strong and we will not be intimidated. Madam Speaker, we are three weeks into the occupation of Ottawa. Centered as it is on our workplace, we have been unable to avoid its impact. And as we reflect, I would ask that we remember that your experience may be different than mine. Some may, some may feel comfortable walking through the lines without fear. As a racialized woman, a very visible Muslim woman, because of my choice to wear the hijab, my experience has been different. I cannot ignore the ties to white supremacy, Islamophobia, and anti-Semitism within this movement. One of those arrested in Quds for possession of a weapon and other charges has a history of Islamophobic social media posts and means pushing the conspiracy theory that the Prime Minister is working with, quote, Islamist, unquote, to take over Canada through immigration. We have seen how online hate can transition to real-world violence. So it is with worry that I walk to Parliament each day, watching carefully those around me. It is a heavy weight to carry. Madam Speaker, it weighs on my soul. My husband and my children are worried for me, but I told them that I'm going to keep showing up. I will not be intimidated. Madam Speaker, I would like to address some of the points I often hear from the supporters of this occupiers. They say this is a peaceful protest. It is just hot tubs and bouncy castles. No, no, it is much, much more. These numbers are maybe a day or two old, but Ottawa police have launched more than 172 criminal investigations, 18 arrests, 33 charges, over 3,000 tickets issued, in Kuts, four charged with conspiracy to murder RCMP officers, 13 arrests, with the seizure of more than a dozen long guns, handguns, ammunition, and body armor. In Windsor, police have made more than 42 arrests, and they have seized 37 vehicles since the protest began there. People have been verbally and physically assaulted for exercising their freedom to wear a mask. This is not a peaceful protest. But do actions don't have to be physical to be violent. Being prevented from earning a living to go to work, to run a business, that is a violent act. The Rideau Centre and many other downtown Ottawa businesses have been closed for weeks because police can't guarantee their safety from maskless protesters seeking to intimidate and frighten employees and the customers. Hundreds of minimum wage retail and food workers unable to go to work and earn the money they need to pay their rent and feed their kids. The closure of the Ambassador Bridge costs $390 million in two-way trade every day it was closed. Auto workers and others reliant on that trade faced temporary layoffs. This is not a peaceful protest. The two major grocery stores in core downtown have been forced to close at times during this occupation for safety reasons, making it difficult for the residents to even buy their groceries. Bus service has been shut down through most of the core, and not everyone is able to walk, especially at minus 30, as it has been some days. This is not a peaceful protest. 
making residents feel unsafe, walking their children down the street, taking away their freedom of movement by occupying their streets, polluting their air with diesel fumes 24-7, honking so constant and loud it took a court order to somewhat reduce it. This is not a peaceful protest. It is a torture. I support peaceful protests and for those for whom this is about vaccine mandates, especially those outside of Ottawa that don't see what life has been like for people here in Ottawa. I want to say that is a fair debate. And you have a right to protest and be heard. And I understand your frustration. We are all frustrated. We are all tired of this pandemic. I want it to be over as much as you do. I have family overseas I have not been able to visit in two years. Believe me, your voice has been heard and understood. But we cannot just wish this pandemic away. Canadians have sacrificed too much. I believe, I hope, we are close to the end. But I don't want to risk seeing restrictions lifted too early and people dying that didn't have to. That's the challenge here, I believe. I support your right to protest on these points. Peacefully park your vehicle, take the LRT downtown, stand on the lawn and protest all day. But peaceful protests does not mean blocking city streets. It does not mean blocking trade and commerce. It does not mean threatening and intimidating local residents who are just trying to live their lives. It's time to give the people of Ottawa their city back. And allow me to say to the people of Ottawa, I'm sorry. We are sorry for what you have had to live through and endure. You don't deserve this. I won't prejudge the commissions and the inquiries that will follow. Right now, the focus must be restoring order. But you have deserved better from all of us. Madam Speaker, I would like to speak to our staff. I started my career in politics as an assistant at Queen's Park, and I know how hard our staff works. We get to go home on the weekends, back in our ridings, and away from this occupation. They have to stay here because our Ottawa staff lives here, many of them in center town or the Byward Market in the heart of this. I urge my colleagues to ask their staff who we couldn't do our jobs without. How do they feel? How are they doing? How is their mental health through all this? What is it like on the weekends when we have gone home but thousands more people bent on trouble and violence descent on the downtown core. I'm so sorry they have had to go through this, that their families have had to go through this, and that some have had to watch as their bosses have posed for photos with the people making their lives unbearable. Photos they then have to post on their bosses' social media. I am sorry, and I hope you have the support you need to get through this. Madam Speaker, I believe in the Charter of Rights, but I feel like so many that quote it haven't really read it. With rights comes the responsibilities, and your rights don't override my rights. We have a responsibility to one another. That's part of living in a democratic society. Canada is founded on the principles of peace, order, and good government. Across our country today, that is under threat by a foreign-funded movement that, under the guise of vaccine mandate, seeks to disrupt our lives, disrupt our trade and commerce, and disrupt our faith in our institutions, our faith in one another. The mayors in this act are targeted, they are proportionate, they respect the charter, and they give the police the tools and the powers they need to restore law and order in our country. It's time to put our democracy first. I will be supporting this order. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Questions and comments? Questions and commentaires?